just after Christmas on a rainy evening at Hawthorne, California, a Phenom 300 runs off the runway. Let's take a look at the video. <laughs> Looks like the Phenom 300 is on a slip and slide. Look at that slide right, wow, right into a fence. Totally out of control. Oh, look at that, look at that turn. Maybe he was supposed to go off on a different taxiway. He went right instead of left, I don't know, something like that. But you look at that, he just slid totally out of control off the end of the runway. So what we're looking at is this Phenom 300 flying in at night into Hawthorne, which is just adjacent to LAX, only by a few miles. It's a great reliever airport. So here we have a plane, it's flying in the rain. The runway at Hawthorne is not grooved. The grooves make a big difference in terms of how much rain and water can just be dissipated and drained off the surface. So he's coming in, he's a little fast. You can see that from the ADS-B data, he comes in fast. And then not only does he come in fast, but he also doesn't touch down to almost 2000 feet past the end of the, the approach into the runway, the displaced threshold. So now we've got a Phenom 300 coming in on a runway that's wet. It has a displaced threshold. So really all of his area that he has to land is not the 4,800, but is around 4,400 feet. And instead of touching down a thousand feet past that beginning part of the displaced threshold, he ends up touching down looks like from ADS-B, maybe up to a thousand feet farther down the runway. So now this guy is flying along, coming in fast. He now has, instead of about 44 or 4,500 feet of runway available to stop, he's already lost at least a thousand past his touchdown point. So that gives him around 3,400, 3,500 maybe. He's a little fast, it's wet, and then it's an accident waiting to happen. It was an accident before he even started that approach because he had decided to take that approach into Hawthorne on a wet runway when it was raining. So I don't know what the weights are of the, of the airplane, but let's say it's midway, let's say 14, 15,000 pounds. So he's coming in. So most likely from all the calculation, it looks like it would probably have taken him a runway of maybe a thousand feet longer than the one that they had at, at Hawthorne. He could have picked another airport, could have gone into LAX, LX has huge grooved runways. Could have parked, been a little bit of inconvenience for his passengers and himself, but uh, Uber rides a lot better than walking out of a, opening up the plane door on a Phenom 300 and uh, noticing that, uh, you know, you're right next to the fence and the highway. And that's what happened. So a lot of times that'll happen, pilots don't under, they underestimate the effects of rain and hydroplaning. They underestimate the effects of excess speed. So, you know, what I do is my rule of thumb is every knot above V-Ref, add 100 feet. Plain and simple, how much runway you're gonna need. Then you add on wet, you add on depth of water, etc. And you look in the performance, you can easily go to 60% more runway or even more sometimes, depending upon your flap settings. And I know because once I, I hydroplaned at Dulles, in my Aerostar 700, and I'll tell you, use hydroplane, and you you just have no control. You go like it's just like on ice, and then uh, you just hope for the best. But in this particular case, no one's got hurt. That's the most important thing. Metal can always be fixed, repaired, or replaced. But uh, something to watch out for when you're flying, especially when it's uh, inclement weather. Wow, glad everybody's okay. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe and also. Uh, do a thumbs up down there if you like the video. We've got a lot of other ones on our channel and we'll make uh, more for all the aviation community.